Hello guys, today I will demonstrate for you the use case for dynamic segmentation, which is simply speaking, I will just make one use case, which is tunneling the client when they connect to a switch from the switch, and that switch will create a tunnel, a GRE tunnel to the controller. But before that, uh, the client will attempt to perform .1x authentication. That authentication request will be sent to ClearPass. ClearPass will send instructions back to the switch and say, would you please tunnel that specific user? And then once that is tunneled, obviously some settings are done on the switch, some other settings are done on the controller, and some other settings are done on clear pass. I will not go through detailed instructions or detailed uh, commands uh, on each one of those, but uh, my aim in here is to, to demonstrate the fact that we can still tunnel the users from the switch to, to the controller. And the purpose for this dynamic segmentation is to make sure that everyone who connects to, to the network, regardless of the mechanism of the connection, they will always be treated equally. So let's have a look and have a, um, you, you understand the concept here. And I will show you uh, different components uh, with high level description. And then we will demonstrate the client when they authenticate get tunneled to the um, to the controller. Let's have a look. So in this case, we see um, on the slide that when the user connects in our case on the switch on interface number five, the user will attempt to perform .1x authentication. The switch will take that request. It will be sent to clear pass for authentication with the username user tunneled. And then once the clear pass authenticates the client, it will be sending back um, an HPE user role that's called tunneled. Now on the switch, we have configured the settings to say this, the logic, if I receive the HPE user role tunneled, then the traffic from that client who has attempted to authenticate will be tunneled to the controller. Now the controller will assign an IP address in this example. We have configured the controller to assign an IP address in the VLAN 131. How does the controller know this? We have already configured the switch in that tunneling mechanism. Would you please assign VLAN 131 to that specific user? In this very simple configuration, the controller is acting as a DHCP server. So the controller will be the one that will um, uh, assign an IP address to the user. So looking to the controller, we have configured certain parameters, but one of the things that we have configured on the controller is the VLAN 131 uh, DHCP range. So that VLAN is acting as a DHCP server, that's number one. So basically what this means, the VLAN is where the client will terminate in and the client will pick up an IP address from that specific VLAN. If we issue the command show IP interface brief, you will notice that that VLAN 131 is up, i.e. this VLAN is functional with no issues whatsoever. Now, on the controller, we have also installed licenses. So the switch will consume one license. So if we have a look at the controller licenses, we have installed three different licenses, AP licenses, PEF next generation firewall licenses, and we have installed RFP protect licenses. Now, if we look at show license usage, you will notice who has consumed licenses. The switch has consumed one license and the AP that is on the controller has consumed one license. Now you will notice that each one of those has consumed one of those licenses. So AP, PIF and RFP licenses. Let's have a look quickly at the switch and we will issue some commands just to verify uh, what we have done. You can issue this command, show tunneled node users all, 
Now you will notice there are no users because we have not yet configured any users, right? So the user has not yet authenticated or has be, not been allowed to authenticate as yet. We will demonstrate that one very soon. We need to enable the switch interface where the client connects to, which is basically interface number five. Yeah, there we go, that's the switch. And uh, let's have a look at the interface status and then we will enable interface number five. Show interface brief. You will notice interface number five has been disabled and we will enable it right now. And what we can do, basically we can just enable some debug commands. Uh, I will enable single debug command, which is debug events and we will see the result of the attempted authentication from the client itself. So before we just start, we say debug events, and we would like to send debug results to the session that we are on. So debug destination session. There we go now. We are in the config mode, and we say interface five enabled, and the debug will show up now. So we can see there's a, an attempt for uh, authentication, it says in here port five is now online and the tunnel node, uh, you can see tunnel has been established and we can, if we issue the previous command, the tunnel node client show tunnel node uh, client users all. Now we see a user has been authenticated and the user tunnel is up. How did we achieve this? We went to the, obviously I have configured the user to attempt to authenticate, which I will show you in a minute. That's where the user is. So you look, this is the machine where they're trying to attempt to authenticate. Now the interface card, we can see three interface cards in here. Uh, the one that attempts or the one that is physically connected to the interface number five on the switch is this NIC card. So let's have a look what we've done here. You right click, you go properties, you will notice there's another additional authentication tab here. How did we achieve this? We initially went to the services and we have enabled, we have enabled the wired config service. I'll show you in a sec. So if you look um, at the wire auto config, by default, this service is disabled. So we turned it on, and this has resulted in the case that this interface card has been uh, enabled with authentication. So we've done some configs here, basically very simple. You go to the authentication tab, and because the um, server certificate is not trusted, we say, would you please don't verify? So we untick this box that was initially ticked. And uh, here also make sure this is not connected, i.e. this is not enabled. Then we went to additional settings. This is where you provide the user credentials. So user tunnel and we provide the credentials. Um, we don't want to just, it's tunneled, the credentials tunneled user which is um, a user configured in clear pass itself. And the password in this case is simply Aruba. We'll say, okay, if all successfully working, then we will see that this will uh, authenticate on the, uh, on the client, uh, on the switch. Now we have an issue in here. It says in here, and let's see um, the switch. And what does the switch, uh, the debug command, what does it show us? Right, in here says tunneling user traffic to user anchor controller failed due to reason authentication module remove user. It seems that we have failed because of the user credentials are incorrectly configured. We will look at clear pass right now. I would see what is the situation. Right, that's clear pass now. We can see in the user tracker, we have been rejected. Why is this the case? We go to alerts, it says user authentication failed, your local user not found, MSCHAB failure to authenticate. So that user, tunneled user, doesn't seem to be to exist. And we have made a mistake. So it should be user tunneled rather than tunneled user, right? 
we can clearly see this in the configuration identity um, local users and says user tunneled. So we will reconnect again with the same username. And this is, uh, we're gonna fix the, um, the issue of authentication. So let's have a look at this. So we're gonna repeat the same attempt, go to properties, go to authentication, and you will go to advanced settings and you will attempt to authenticate right now. And the username that we have made a mistake, user tunnel, password is Aruba. And let's see now, okay, again, okay, again, attempted to authenticate. And that's now authenticated. So let's go and have a look at the switch and what happens um, in, the, in the case of the switch. So there we go. Now that's the switch. You can see um, successful connection and authentication. If we issue the command show users, you will notice this user has authenticated. Secondary role is the one that will be sent to the controller and that will be assigning uh, the controller will be assigning this role to that connected user. Now, if everything works fine, we would expect the client to pick up an IP address in VLAN 131, the one that is configured on the controller. So let's have a look at the IP address that was assigned to the user. And um, we go status and we go to details here. We can notice that the controller has assigned an IP address in VLAN 131 with the default gateway being the controller itself, 254, right? And with the DNS as we have done it on the controller, meaning this is the, these are the DHCP settings that have been configured on the controller and they were sent to that client when the client has connected and authenticated. Now on the controller, we can issue something like this command show tunnel node manager use a tunnel table and you're going to see that um, we have one tunnel user and you notice that the tunnel is basically established from the switch so the tunnel node which is the switch uh, with this ip address 10.1.10.5 the tunnel id is 13 and the vlan where the client will terminate is vlan 131 Let's have a look at the clients here. So users, you will notice the tunneled user, right? So this tunneled user connected using tunneled user.1x and this user is a tunneled user, right? So that's what, that's what exactly happened. And the IP address of that specific machine as we have seen it on the machine itself is 10.1 dot one three one dot one. Now we will attempt to connect um, the same user using wireless. So now we tunnel the user from the wired client uh, and that tunneled user has been assigned a firewall role that's called tunneled um, authenticated. We will attempt to tunnel or to authenticate a user from a wireless client into the um, into the controller, you will notice that user will be assigned the same firewall role, meaning the treatment for both, i.e. for the same user, when that user connected as wired or connected as wireless, the treatment is 100% um, the same. It means we can centrally push the same policy to any user who connect regardless of their connection status meaning connection uh, mechanism. So now let's have a look at the user machine. So there's um, an SSID as I said to you before called employee and the user will connect using that employee. Now we will attempt to authenticate using the same username and the username we have used in the wired client was user tunneled and the password is very simple one Aruba we accept this and we will now after this so this is being connected authenticated the client and if you look at the properties here you will definitely see 
that this client has been assigned an IP address in the same VLAN, but of course, this is the second client. It will be, in this case, 10.1.131.2. So we will have a look at the controller right now and to see a list of two clients connected with the same name, fair enough, to demonstrate the fact that I can authenticate and tunnel users wired and wirelessly. So let's have a look at uh, the controller. Now we can clearly see we issued the command show user. Here we can see two users, one being tunneled user and one being wireless. Please note the username is the same, user tunneled, and this is user tunneled. So this is basically, and both of them have been assigned the same role that's called authenticated. And the forward mode here, meaning how the traffic reaching the controller is through a different tunnel, right? So tunnel one, tunnel two. And this user is connected using access point called instant AP2. And this user connected using the client, which is the switch client. And this is the roaming, this is tunneled. And that's a tunnel. And this is connecting using ESSID, which is simply speaking the uh, WLAN name employee. And that's why it is. And uh, both of them have been treated equally. Another look at ClearPass itself um, will show us in the access tracker, we have used tunneled users. And the service that was used for, for these wireless users is a different one than the one that was used for the wired. And just quickly looking at this service, that's, a, that's our interest here. And this is the, the service that has um, served the request from the client, basically, right? So the service and the roles that have been assigned is called tunneled. Look at this, tunneled. And how, so this is the role that was sent back to the switch. Look into this one, into the configuration, the enforcement profile, that's where the tunnel role that is sent back to the switch and says tunneled. The switch was configured, as we said before, with the parameters that says, if I receive um, an HPE role, user role tunneled, then I will tunnel the traffic, uh, uh, client traffic to the controller. So in this video, we have demonstrated the fact that we can tunnel as part of dynamic segmentation, as part of the bigger picture, obviously. This one use case of dynamic segmentation, other use cases um, are demonstrated by the fact that I can tunnel uh, from um, any campus or data center to the cloud-based uh, communication, which is something that can be achieved in many different ways. Um, there are also some other tiny mechanisms that we can use, uh, some overlaid mechanisms, but in this video, we simply demonstrated the fact that we can use user-based tunnel to tunnel the traffic from the switch to, uh, to the controller with the help of ClearPass. Thank you very much for listening to this video and I hope I see you in, in future videos. Thank you.